In a mechanical watch, there are no batteries. The way we power a mechanical watch is with a spring. Energy is stored inside of a spring. The spring has to be coiled up tightly so that when it unwinds, that power can be used to move the escapement, which will transfer energy through the gear train to the hands of a watch. So mechanical watches require this spring, and that's the main spring. Traditionally, clocks used weights that would be raised, and then slowly they would lower. That would power a town clock but you can't fit that sort of thing inside of a wristwatch or a pocket watch. So somebody had to invent the spring for a wristwatch. The mainspring is a coiled metal spring that is made from round wire that has been flattened and then coiled. In modern watches, that coil is shaped like an S-curve so that as the mainspring unwinds, the torque remains the same. What we don't want is lots of torque with a fully wound watch, and then halfway through unwinding, the torque is extremely low. That would happen if you have a coil that is just a regular coil, like a snail shell. If you're thinking a regular coil that just circles out, that's gonna have some properties that are not ideal for a wristwatch. So the S-curve is the best shape for us to have consistent power throughout the power reserve of a watch. Materials have changed a lot over the years. The first watch mainsprings were made of steel with iron and they would be formed into these coils and with that process of forming them and hardening them so that they were actually springy they would become brittle and those springs wouldn't last as long because they're constantly winding and unwinding and you introduce fatigue so those springs would break. They needed to be improved upon. So eventually there were carbon steel springs and carbon steel was a little bit better. But still, in order to have a hard enough metal that you can realize the spring attributes, you end up with something that is brittle and fatigues over time. So after carbon steel springs, there were white alloy springs. Currently, the main maker of this alloy is Nivarox in Switzerland. And they make this alloy called Nivaflex, which is a cobalt, nickel, chrome alloy that is resistant to rusting, but it's also very resistant to fatiguing. When you take a piece of metal and you bend it, and then you bend it back, and you do that over and over again, that metal will fatigue and break. So with these special alloy springs, they're resistant to this fatigue, and they last much longer. When this alloy was first created, we started to see watches and watch mainsprings advertised as unbreakable. 
They're not completely unbreakable, but they are very resistant to breaking under normal wear. If we had wish lists of what we wanted from a mainspring, they might not be able to be achieved with the old carbon steel mainsprings because of that fragility where they would end up breaking. So we could design different springs now with these new alloys that allow us to have longer power reserves. We can even have two mainsprings in a watch with two barrels in order to increase the power or increase the length of time that that watch will run, the power reserve. And when you take a mainspring out of the barrel, we can see that it's shaped like an S and is wound backwards in order to provide enough torque throughout the entire power reserve. On a manual wind watch, the spring will have a little eyelet on the inside of the coil to hold on to the barrel arbor. And then on the very end of the spring, it will have some sort of termination. It could be an eyelet as well, or more commonly, it would be another piece of spring welded on there that will hook on the outside of the barrel so that when we turn the arbor, the spring winds. So when we wind a watch with the crown, the spring will coil up as the arbor turns. And then over the next day or two, as the barrel turns, it will unwind. So winding turns the arbor, and then as the watch runs, the barrel turns. In an automatic watch, you will also have an eyelet at the inner coil of the spring to fix it to the arbor, and then you will have an S-curve. At the end of the spring, however, you will have a bridle, which allows the spring to hold on to the outside wall of the barrel until the watch is fully wound. Once the watch is fully wound, that bridle will slip in little notches that are cut into the inside of the barrel. So that spring will allow the arbor to continue to turn even once the watch is fully wound. And this keeps the spring from breaking or the oscillating weight in the back of the watch from locking up. So inside of this power storage mechanism that is in a mechanical watch, you have at least four parts. The arbor, the spring, the barrel, and the lid. And in an automatic watch, that system is never at rest when you're wearing it. It is constantly turning and being wound. With a manual wind watch, it's constantly unwinding, right? Your watch is always telling time if you've been winding it. Same thing with the automatic watch. It is always unwinding, but it is also always unwinding and winding. So these springs have to be very resistant to the stress of that process and the fatiguing that can happen. Inside the barrel drum of an automatic watch, there are several notches where the bridle can grab a hold, but still slip as the watch becomes fully wound and continues winding itself. Inside of a manual wind watch, you have one notch, and that notch locks the outermost point of that spring in place and it will not ever unlock and drag around the inside of the barrel. So with a manual wind watch, you do not need to lubricate or add any kind of slipping grease to the inside of the barrel. So in order to make a modern mainspring, we start with round wire 
of a chosen alloy like Nivaflex. It's then run through rollers to flatten it to the desired thickness. Then you will have either a bridle or some kind of termination laser welded onto the end of it and the inner eyelet stamped or cut out of the other end. Then it will be coiled into the shape that is desired, the proper heat treating in order to reach the right spring levels. And then it will be placed into a little ring. So that little ring will allow the watchmaker to simply press the spring into the barrel for assembly. This stored energy within the spring is released over time. The faster the balance wheel oscillates, meaning higher frequencies, the faster the power will drain from that mainspring. So in order to increase the power reserve of a watch, there are different ways to achieve that. One way is to not change the spring at all and just lower the frequency at which the balance wheel oscillates so that the gear train moves less and the requirements of the mainspring are shorter. The other way is to change the dimension of the barrel to include a longer spring. You could also have a thinner spring with more coils inside of the same size barrel. There's also the possibility of adding multiple barrels stacked one on top of the other so that you have two springs, one inside one barrel and one in the next barrel. Or you could have barrels next to each other. Again, you have two main springs. Some watches will even stack many more barrels or have many more barrels laid out flat in order to increase the power reserve. There is a certain amount of torque that is required for the gear train and the balance wheel to operate properly. As long as we can maintain that level of torque throughout the entire power reserve, everything will be okay. And that is how a spring is designed. And there's many different ways to go about that with the thickness of the spring, the height of the spring, the number of winds, the number of springs, a more efficient gear train will require less torque and could potentially allow for longer power reserves because of a lower torque requirement. So there's not really one way to get a longer power reserve. There are many different ways to achieve a longer power reserve. But the mainspring is really the starting point. Without the mainspring, our watches could not keep time. It's what allows us to not have a battery. If you have an automatic watch on your wrist, every time you move, the mainspring is moving with you. Every morning with a manual wind watch, when you wind up the crown, it's turning that spring. It's one of the parts that we interact with daily when we wear mechanical watches. We have to charge that spring in order for the watch to run. Instead of plugging a watch in to a power source and using electricity or putting in batteries, a mechanical watch will run as long as we energize this spring by turning the crown or by moving our wrist. The mainspring in a mechanical watch is one of the hardest 
working parts. It is always unwinding whenever the watch is running. It's always under some amount of torque and it's always moving. Thank you.